Sadna, my name is Guru Fatah Singh. I'm a teacher of Kundalini Yoga. And today I'm going to speak about Kundalini Yoga and the path of Moses. I teach in Toronto, a multicultural city, and a number of my students are Jewish. They uh, find it enriches their lives, keeps them healthy, and, uh, and uh, helps them in many ways. What I'm going to talk about is I'm going to look at the path of Moses from my point of view, a yogic point of view, a holistic point of view. I'll start with the story of uh, Moses in the burning bush, a famous story where Moses uh, came back from uh, uh, where he got uh, his Ten Commandments up on the top of the mountain, and he was speaking with the bush, which was basically God, and, uh, and he asked the burning bush, uh, who shall I say I'm speaking to? I say I'm speaking with a bush. And uh, so a voice came to him and said, you may say you're speaking with Yahweh, or Jehovah, or in reality, in, in Hebrew, the word that was spoken, we say, is ineffable, unspeakable. But there was a word that was given, a name that was given. And um, grammatically, we know that the word meant uh, to be or to become. And from a yogic point of view, we say, I am, I am. It's a neutral frame. It's a, it's a frame of beingness, of consciousness, rather than having, which is a big difference. You can have a lot of stuff, good stuff, bad stuff, and then lose it. But if you can ground yourself in your being, and you're just in being, I am, not I am good, or I am bad, or I'm rich, or I'm poor, I'm sick, or I'm healthy, just being. It's a great thing. And uh, it comes with practice. A child, naturally, they're rooted in their being. It couldn't be otherwise. But as a person grows and their concerns grow, and most people become warriors rather than warriors. So to be in your concept and your spirit of being in your neutral mind is a great thing. It's a discipline. And so Moses, to my mind, was a great disciplinarian. He practiced the discipline of mind, the discipline of spirit, and that made him a master. My teacher told a beautiful story of um, the, the exodus of the, the tribes of Israel uh, going from Egypt to the Promised Land and how they made it in 40 years. He said, you know what, ordinarily the, the, the Sinai Peninsula, not such a big expanse. You could cross that 40 days, but it took such a long time. Why? My teacher gave this insight. He said, you know what, it was a character building exercise. You get all these enslaved people with an enslaved mind and an enslaved spirit. And Moses, as their teacher, he took them across there. And uh, over those 40 years, they developed new habits, habits of resilience, habits of, uh, of strength, where before there had been habits of, of weakness and of uh, cowardice and of giving in. And uh, so by the time they crossed over, they could actually hold a kingdom. They could uh, be regal. They could. Uh, have their own independence rather than living in slavery and in addiction. It's a different story from what we mostly heard, but it's a, it makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. Mastery comes from self-discipline. And uh, when you're in an addicted or slavish consciousness, there's no dignity to be had and there's no happiness to be had. I uh, looked in the Old Testament, I looked in the Torah, and uh, such a beautiful ancient piece of wisdom. And the funny thing I saw there, my teacher, you know, he encouraged us to, to live in harmony with our DNA, with our mother nature, to keep our hair. And uh, I looked in the Old Testament and I saw, wow, Moses was telling uh, Aaron how the priest is supposed to look and they're supposed to have a turban, <laughs> and they're supposed to have a, a tunic and a cummerbund, even uh, linen underwear. And it, was, it really reflected on my own tradition as a Sikh. And maybe thinking these traditions are not, not that far apart. And there's a universal spirit which guides much of spirituality. So I'm happy to share this little bit with you. And uh, uh, to me, the essence of being chosen people, of being special, is feeling your own uniqueness, feeling your own distinctiveness, and not being shy to be different or shy to be distinct. And also taking it as a, as a badge of honor to be able to sacrifice. You know, being distinctive and being special doesn't mean you get special privileges necessarily. Rather, I don't go for those privileges. 
I feel so privileged to serve other people. And uh, that is my concept of being a chosen people, or a chosen person. And your destiny gives you the great privilege to help and to assist uh, other people to be their very best. Well, thank you for taking this time with me. Shalom, and wish you the very best. Satnam.